Hi, my name is Michelle with Silver Lining Daydreams and in today's video we are going to go through paper clutter and we're going to bring you along as we went through all of our paper clutter. We organized a system that works well for us that is easy to store things and also to retrieve what we're looking for. So let's get started. We have four steps that we go through for most things at our home and paper clutter is no different. The first thing we do is gather everything and take inventory. The second thing we do is to sort and then remove things that we don't need anymore. The third thing we do is to organize and then put everything back. The fourth thing we do is to manage what comes into our home, whether it's paper, clothing, accessories, everything. It's these basic principles that we try to apply to every aspect in our life. We had to do this in a few different steps because of the way that Brad and I work. We're very different from each other and the way that we store things and access things is very different. Simple organization works best for us because if it's not easy to either find what we need or to put it away quickly and easily, we know that it's not gonna get done. We're gonna end up with a big, huge stack of papers that need to be filed. Basically, our paperwork will fall into two categories, active and inactive. So the active ones are the ones that are the bills, invitations, schedules, that sort of thing that needs to be accessed and taken care of quickly. And then there's the other documents that are more inactive or reference ones. One of the main things with this system is that we try to have it as broad of categories as possible. We've been watching some of the Marie Kondo on Netflix, and with that, what her goal is to have no paper at all. So we knew that that wouldn't work quite well for us. The first thing that we did was to go through Brad's desk. We first had to do a quick sort and make piles for personal notes, to-do list, receipts, mail, and all sorts of things. After getting rid of the garbage, we went through to see what he wanted to keep. Not necessarily what we had room for, but what was functional for him to work, and we got rid of everything that didn't belong. What's left are the things that he still uses. He's still keeping the bill basket for incoming mail, actionable paperwork, and personal notebooks. This can be stressful for anyone. Going through all the papers wasn't easy, but in the end, he said that he's glad that he did it. He has more space to work, and it had to be done anyhow, and he feels a lot less stressed not having stuff all over the place and hanging over his head. The bill basket that he had on his desk is actually, everything is, is right in here. Bills that when they come in, he puts them right in here so that they can be paid when, um, when they're due. I knew that this was going to be a big project and I had to have a plan, um, kind of set out a general plan in mind before I started because you know I would start to think through something and then I'd end up getting derailed because I'd get frustrated or overwhelmed or start to um, you know, be worried that I was going to get rid of too many things or um, I was going to have too many categories. So it's just things like that, you know, where do you put your mortgage papers? Is that under documents or is that under banking or is that under investments? You know what I mean? So it's, it's that kind of thing. It was all of those small little questions that I had every time I would come up with a piece of paper. Oh, do I need that? After we went through his desk paperwork, and aside from our warranty and manual paperwork, we had a large bin. And what I did was I went through everything with Brad and just super general. I said, hey, are you comfortable if we get rid of this? Are you comfortable if we get rid of this? Things that I thought that we should get rid of, I wanted to make sure that he was comfortable with it too. Oftentimes the things that we're storing on paper is old information anyhow. The first thing I did was to gather all of the paperwork. If you don't gather your paper all together at one time, you're not forced to really, to really look at it, to really get a grasp of what you have. I can understand having your, your manuals and warranties in that, you know, going through that separately, maybe your desk separately, and then the documents that you've been saving, those things separately. That makes sense, you know, do what works well for you. What worked well for me was to go through everything and purge out things that I knew that we didn't need. And then that helped me to better manage what we had left and to be able to better decide, is this something that we need to keep? Is this something that we can digitize? Is this something that we can um, easily replace?
A few things that are easy to purge are old checks and bank statements. Once they're reconciled, you can just shred them. They're available online if you ever need to reference them. There's also those welcome packets that you get from the bank. If we have questions on services, we just either look it up or we give them a call. Another thing that you can purge is old mortgage paperwork. If you've either paid off your mortgage or paid off a loan um, or you've refinanced, you only need to keep the most current one. You don't need to keep all of the old ones. The other thing that you can purge is credit card bills. Once it comes in the mail, look through, make sure that everything is accurate, pay it, and then shred that. You don't need to keep all of that information around. Another thing that you can get rid of is old insurance paperwork and statements. Just keep your current one and um, that way it's easily accessible, has all the information that you need on there. And But most of the time when we have a question about our policy, we just call our agent. We don't look through all of the paperwork. We just give her a call and you know she answers our questions for us. Something else we purged were old investment statements. We'll keep one current one in case something happens to Brad or I so our kids will know our financial situation, but that's really about it. You can also purge old tax documents. Check with your accountant, but here in America, generally that time frame is about seven years. Another thing that you can purge, something that we found was paperwork for vehicles that we no longer even have. Another thing that we came across when we were purging was paperwork for work that we had done on our vehicles. You don't need to keep um, all of your receipts for oil changes or tire rotation or a radiator flush or you know whatever kind of work that you're having done. You don't need to keep all of that and um, because the place that you had your work done, that shop is going to have record of it. We take our truck to one shop and that way it has all of our maintenance records all in one place. The other thing that we purged was utility bills. Once it comes in, you look at it, make sure everything is correct, pay it and you can purge it. If you want to um, compare from year to year, most utility companies have all that information online. Another thing that you can purge is old medical bills or dental bills. Um, if it's not paid off yet, you can rest assured that they'll send you another one in another month, um, but you don't, need to, you don't need to keep that. If you do need to have it for end of year taxes, something along that line, they can just send it to you at the end of the year. You just call your clinic up and just say, hey, I just need to know how much I, um, I spent at the clinic this year, then they write you up a report, mail it out, or they will um, email it, and it's really easy. Another thing that you can get rid of is pay stubs. Um, you know, go through it when you get when you get your paycheck. Make sure that everything on there is correct, and then you can shred that, purge it, whatever you want with it. Because at the end of the year, you're going to have a W-2 that's going to tell you everything that you earned. The only thing that I can think of on why you would want to keep your pay stubs is if you don't think that your employer is um, either keeps accurate records or is completely honest. You know, I'm I'm not sure. But, um, and then that way you have a record of everything that you've made through the year. The second step that we did was to do just a very quick sort. Um, I wasn't worrying about dates. I wasn't worrying about a whole lot of um, details with things. I had several bins set up and I put things in there super quickly. If it was insurance that went in here, banking, investments, um, you know, documents. I just, you know, Airbnb, RV share, whatever it was. I just quickly went through everything that we had so I could get a good grasp on what we had left and um, then go through those things more fine detail. Come up with a plan on what we needed to keep. What was essential? What did we really, really need to keep? And again, referring to um, the KonMari method, she doesn't have any paperwork at all. So knowing that that's the goal, um, but I knew that that wouldn't work in our household. I, after all of the purging, the things that we are keeping are things for our taxes. Um, we have a couple of businesses. We do RV share and also Airbnb. And then I also have an art business where I sell things at art shows or personal sales. Those things are all kept separately. And then at the end of the year, when we do our taxes, they're all gathered together and we give them to our accountant and she goes through everything and then the, that paperwork for that year for that business or our personal taxes, all of that paperwork is together with the taxes so that if we're ever audited, everything is in one spot. One of our categories is insurance. In one insurance pack in here, we have all of our house insurance, truck insurance, health insurance, everything that we need with that is all in one spot. Um, investments. 
So we have you know, investments from Brad's work, my work, other things that we're involved in. We have all of those investments in one spot instead of everything being separate. The other inactive files might be things like, um, you know, again, your documents. Another thing to go through is old receipts, manuals, and warranties. So most things need to be returned within 30 days. And um, if you want to keep it for, sometimes you do need to have the receipt for a warranty. Like we have uh, faucets that have a lifetime warranty. So what we've done with that is we have our receipt and it is stapled to the warranty so that everything is together in one spot. And then if we had a problem with it, then we can have that all covered. After you've gone through all of the work to purge everything and categorize what you're keeping, you're gonna to wanna to keep that uh, paperwork that's coming into your home to a minimum. When, you, when it comes in the mail, just um, sort it right away. Things that go to recycling, put it in there. If there's something that needs to take action on it, put it there. If it's a new um, insurance document, take out your old one, have that one shredded, put your new one in. Just take care of it right away. It just takes a couple of seconds. You don't need to put it in a pile and then have a whole big huge pile stack up again that you're going to need to go through. That's just really stressful. Just if it's easy to take care of, just take care of it right away. Thanks so much for watching. My hope for this video is that it will inspire you to go through and organize your own home. The less things that we have, the less we need to maintain and the more time that we're going to have being able to spend it doing what we really want to do instead of shuffling papers around. If you have any ideas on how you've tackled paper clutter in your home, we'd love to hear it in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we really hope that you consider doing so. We really enjoy sharing what we're learning and what we're doing, and we would love to have you come along. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.